I'm tracking a massive storm system into next week that's going to move from the mountain west all the way to the east coast, bringing severe weather courtesy of major pattern swings. We'll talk about the severe weather side of this storm with the latest outlooks from the Storm Prediction Center, and even take a look at the cooler side where there are some increasing snow chances. Everything in this video right here. Check out sponsored Weatherbell Maps for maps like the ones I use in this video, free trial in the description. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the rest of this video. We are literally about 10 subscribers away from that 3,000 subscriber goal as I film this. Now, let's get into the pattern overview here. Future radar with your European model pretty much breezing through the next few days because we've got a pretty dry pattern ahead other than a brief little shot of snow through southeast Indiana, southern Ohio, and into Appalachia as we go in towards our Saturday here. These red lines returning to the plains by the time we make our way towards our our, you know, our Sunday and into our Monday. This is really indicating a big warm-up, some ridging developing. Temperatures 25, 30, 35 degrees above normal for this time of the year. Setting the stage for this big system, this cooler air in the west. You can see parts of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, even the northwestern parts of Wyoming there, picking up on a heavy snowfall, especially in the higher elevations. That's really the cooler side of this storm, as we're going to see that jet stream dive on down. And you can see the first pieces of the system System really getting together as we go towards our Tuesday morning with rainfall over parts of the Ohio Valley, even on down into the Tennessee Valley, and also still watching that polar jet stream dip on down like so, and really beginning to set on up our whole system. We kind of talked about the jet streams fusing in my last video. That's what's really just creating this whole low pressure system in the first place. And the European model and GFS are starting to come into better consensus that we'll have this little northern end snow stripe up here through Iowa, southeast uh, Minnesota, and northern parts of Wisconsin. You can also see probably as we go late Tuesday evening some severe weather developing from northern Arkansas all the way on over there into parts of Indiana. So really watching this system closely does look like it will be very dynamic and look at how it swings eastward. By the time we're talking around, say, 9, 10 a.m. on our Wednesday morning, very sharp cold front visible there from northern Louisiana all the way back on up there towards Michigan where some snowfall will be occurring. Meanwhile, again, just ahead of this line I just drew, that's where that severe weather will be possible, progressing towards Appalachia on Wednesday. Then as we go towards the end of our day Wednesday, the European model pretty much pushing the system offshore despite some brief heavy snowfall maybe breaking out on the tail end up there into parts of interior New England. Now, looking at the GFS scenario, yesterday it was very much so behind the European model. Not quite as much today, but we are still looking at this um, being just, you know, maybe six hours behind, especially towards the tail end of this event. So let's kind of play this out here. You can see as we go towards the end of our Tuesday and into our early Wednesday, again, you see a very similar setup. Some snow up there in the far upper Midwest, but watching the severe zone up there from parts of mo mostly Arkansas on over there to Indiana and maybe southwestern Ohio as well. The potential for some severe thunderstorms in that part of this storm system. What's even crazier is because the system is just you know, six to 12 hours behind with that cold front pushing in a little bit faster. It actually has snow catch on up to that line of some thunderstorms here. So it might be, you know, some colder thunderstorms up there in northern Alabama Wednesday afternoon with the setup and snowing in Nashville, Tennessee at the tail end. I really don't think this is the most likely scenario, but I figured I'd at least show it to you. Um, again, the GFS now at this point also having it cleared by Thursday, which is unlike its scenario from yesterday. So the model's coming into a little bit better consensus there. What's helping to set this whole system up is how warm we are out ahead of it. As we go in towards our Sunday afternoon, this is just the start of the warm-up. 15, 20, 25 degrees above normal for this time of the year from Texas up to Montana. Look at how that, you know, that ridging, that warmth just builds and builds as we head in towards the Monday time frame. 25, 30, 35, even up there in the upper Midwest, close to 40 degrees above normal in towards our Monday. And this is just what sets the stage. You can see those deep blues starting to encroach from northwestern U.S. And look at how we get that line, that very sharp contrast as we go towards our Tuesday late evening. Warmer than average air moving on up ahead of this, cooler than average air, kind of try and push on in behind the system. That's what really kind of develops and makes us a dynamic storm with the polar jet stream interacting and creating that strong cold front, so to speak here. Let's look at those high temperatures. Anything in the boxes is where you're going to be having record highs. As we go in towards our Monday, you've got record highs in the 60s and 70s up there into parts of the Dakotas and even southern Minnesota. It's closer to the 80s and 90s. Everything in the plains pretty much records there, but 80s and 90s are going to be down there in parts of Oklahoma and West Texas, Dallas getting near, say, 83, 84 on our Monday. Really crazy stuff there, warming up considerably as we head into early next week. And then even as we go into our 
towards our Tuesday, we're going to notice those records shift east a little bit, and you can see that cold frontal line up there in the upper Midwest. We've got 15 to 20 degree highs up there in the parts of the Dakotas. Meanwhile, we're sitting near 70 in Chicago, Illinois, 65 in you know central Wisconsin, Green Bay near 60. Really big contrast, and that's what creates systems like this. I mean, you can see as we go in towards our Wednesday even, we've still got that cold front visible stretching from Texas all the way into New England. It does look like as we go into Wednesday, the contrast of those two air masses gets a little bit weaker there. Now, of course, we're talking about warmth. We're talking about severe weather out of this system into our Tuesday and then Tuesday evening and even into the overnight and into our early Wednesday morning. That's what this outlook encompasses. If you live anywhere from eastern Oklahoma to southwestern Michigan, that's where the Storm Prediction Center is saying you should be on high alert as they've outlined that early risk area in yellow. As we go into Wednesday, the yellow area includes eastern Arkansas all the way in over there into parts of southern Kentucky, as well as on back down there towards northwestern Georgia, northern Alabama, um, northern Mississippi as well. Any area surrounding those yellow zones is where we should really be watching out for that severe weather. What really helps to kind of create that severe weather is ample moisture. We've got the jet streams in place. We've got lots of shifting winds in the atmosphere to help create rotation and strong updrafts for thunderstorms. But what we're kind of lacking a little bit of further north is the ample moisture. It's very warm, but you can see those dew points struggling to get near 60 up there in the parts of Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. This has been a little bit more of a trend that we've seen in the models lately. If we can get that moisture that's locked up closer to the Gulf Coast further north, Fourth. And that's when we'll see more of the in the way of sustained severe weather and definitely more of an outbreak potential at this point again i don't think we can really call this you know a likely outbreak yet because you can see this storm energy is you know we're only going up to maybe a thousand on a six thousand scale there over parts of the midwest tuesday night and into our wednesday here with the euro model notice how that instability becomes even weaker overnight tuesday night and into our wednesday and with the wednesday threat i mean you can still see the line of instability but it is very lackluster so i think that is one thing that we have to kind of keep a close eye on because at this point it's not really set in stone if all the ingredients are just going to be 100% in place. Now we're about to look at my severe weather graphics day by day. My severe weather outlooks go from zero being nothing, but on the severe weather actual scale here, it goes from one to seven. One being low certainty, few severe storms possible. Two and three starting to get into a little bit more of an increased risk. Four and five is where you're talking maybe outbreak possible. Six and seven is where you're talking outbreak likely. And at this point, just because the Storm Prediction Center still has those yellow areas in place, I want everybody to be weather aware, especially again, from northeast Oklahoma to southern parts of Michigan and western Ohio as we go into towards our Tuesday, and this does include Tuesday night as well. If you live in southeastern Missouri, far northeastern Arkansas, through parts of southern Illinois and southwestern Indiana, this is my personal projection. I've got you on the three of seven on my scale, meaning an increased chance for a potential all hazards threat. So I want you to keep that in mind if you live there. As we go in towards our Wednesday, again, I think the certainty just decreases in everything. You know, the models are a lot more spread out on timing, you know, instability, ingredients as we go, especially in towards our Wednesday event. I was teetering on the edge of putting that three down here, but I did um, through parts of western Tennessee and western Kentucky as we go in towards our Wednesday time frame. This would probably be around the midday time frame on Wednesday through there. Um, again, I think it's a little early to be putting a three down there um, on my severe weather scale, but I'm just doing it to keep you more alert. I think it's more of a two across a lot of that region. Nonetheless, again, watch out for severe weather across that region into next week. But anyway, here we go, talking about snowfall out of the storm. You know, you're racking up big time there in the Pacific Northwest, Cascades, high elevations of Idaho, Montana, um, northwestern Wyoming as well. There's also this little stripe that's shown up here from parts of northern Nebraska on up there into the Upper Peninsula. I really think, of Michigan, I should say, I think that could actually overperform a little bit from what the Euro is showing. So, you know, I think more spots could pick up maybe two to four inches in there. The GFS also showing some lighter totals, but I really think when we get those, you know, those shorter range models out, the HRRR, the NAM model, that's our shorter range guidance, those might actually show some maybe more three to six inch totals filling in there if this continues looking like it is right now. I'll keep you updated on that. Now, as we take a look at that three-day snowfall again, Monday through Thursday here out of the GFS, notice that little snow that wraps around at the tail end of this event also brings snow into Appalachia and interior New England. That is very much so to be determined. Um, but in terms of our wind gusts and miles per hour out of the European model, we are going to have some really strong winds ripping through the mountain west and a lot of it here as we go towards our Monday afternoon, kind of moving out of the Pacific Northwest. Sunday into Monday, we see this over a lot of the rest of the Rockies and the Four Corners region. High terrain, you know, we're talking nearing some 
um, tropical storm force, hurricane force gusts at times, so, you know, 50 plus mile power winds in many cases and some of those higher elevations that continues as we go towards our Tuesday afternoon as well. Also, the central plains getting in on that action with 30 to even 45, 50 mile per hour gusts through parts of Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa during that time frame. The low, you can see those stronger winds moving through the Great Lakes region. Some spots there through places like, you know, Marquette, Michigan, Hofton up there. Um, we'll be watching for some 50 mile per hour gusts as well. The southern end of this, uh, you know, some south winds gusting 25, 30 miles per hour. And with the wind comes a fire threat with the dryness there. I do want to point that out there for West Texas, Southeast New Mexico. Um, even through parts of northwest Oklahoma here as we go into our Monday. So if you live in any of these areas highlighted in orange or red, this also stretches into places in eastern Colorado and far southwestern Kansas. Please be on high alert for that. And into next week, this is your 6 to 10 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. Much warmer than average over the Great Lakes. And you know what that tells me? That tells me with the cooler than average air to its west, we might be setting up for another similar system or another at least potent system as we head towards, say, the very end of next week into the next weekend. So that's something worth watching. Um, but for now, hit that subscribe button so I can keep you updated and ahead of every storm. And um, we're right to 3,000 subscribers right about now. Um, we'd love to see it over the next day or two. Thanks so much um, for all your support. Uh, Weatherbell Maps trial in the description. One Nation Weather.